written that I need to say it's in the notes already, so you can use those to review the message when you go. Verse number eight, and before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and all whom he utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Because of you, for the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. This morning I'd like to give a message entitled The Christian in Cana. Of course, that is uh, Rahab. Now, Rahab is one of the two women personally named in Hebrews chapter 11. A chapter that is known as the honor of faith. Of faith. Yung mga nandiyan makikita natin, those are people who uh, who had great faith in God. Rahab is one of those two women that were personally named. Sinasabi ng Bible doon, yung mga ibang women, but they were not named. And of course, the other one is Sarah. From being a pagan prostitute, Rahab became one of the ancestors of our Lord Jesus Christ. You find that in Matthew chapter 1, nung ibigay, ibigay na yung mga ancestral line ng ating Panginoon, Rahab is one of them. Like these Thessalonian believers, Rahab turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Amen. Now today we will look at the faith of this woman. And I want you to listen very carefully to the message and I want you to examine your faith. I want you to use this message as uh, to re-evaluate your faith. Anong klaseng pananampalataya meron si Rahab? Anong klaseng pananampalataya meron ka? Anong klaseng pananampalataya meron tayo? Very quickly, number one, Rahab's faith was a courageous faith. It was a courageous faith. The Bible tells us in verse number 1, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came in unto an harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. And we can continue reading until verse number 7. Now, her account in, verse, in these verses 8 to 11 shows that she had faith, even before the spies arrived in Jericho. Wala pa man, hindi pa man nakakarating yung mga spies sa Jericho. Si Rahab ay sumampalataya na sa Panginoon. And she demonstrated her faith by risking her life in receiving and protecting the spies. Tinanggap niyo yung spies. Alam niyo, that was very risky. Paano pag nalaman ng hari? You know, she will be accountable to the king, Lord of Jericho. And so it was very risky in her part. However, makikita natin that Rahab was hospitable to the spies. She received them, and not only that she was hospitable, not only that she received them, the Bible also tells us that she hid them. Look at verse number 6, the Bible says, But she had brought them forth, Sorry, but she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stock of flocks which she had laid in order upon the roof. You know, 
What I'm saying is that si Rahab, yung kanyang pagtanggap dun sa mga spies, she accepted, she received them, and she hid them. If Rahab wanted to, she could have turned the spies to the, to the soldiers that came to search. And if she did that, dapat naging hero siya sa Jericho. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you see the woman, Rahab, if she turned these spies to the soldiers that came to search the house? Ah, she would be a hero in Jericho that day. Actually, there was one woman, if we look at uh, the Bible in Judges, just the next book, chapter 4. Do you remember the story of uh, Barak and Deborah? And they defeated the army of the Canaanites. The captain was Cesarah. Cesarah fled. <coughs> Tignan niyo yung story dito. Ano nangyari dito? Rahab could have done what Jael did. The, the verse starts, or the story begins in verse number 17 of Judges chapter 4. How did Cesarah fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael? Talagang, he, he fled. And then after so much running, he came to a tent, and uh, the, it was the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Ahazur, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Cesarah and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me. Fear not. And when she had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink. Can you please give me some maji? For I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk. Instead of giving her maji, she gave her maziwa. Okay? And look at this. And gave him a drink and covered him. Again, he said unto her, stand in the door. She gave instruction to Jael, and she said, Stand at the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man that come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any, is there any man here? Thou shalt say, No. Verse number 21, Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail. Nung nakatulog na itong si Cesar, she took a peg. It's probably about 12 inches long. Yung ginagamit para sa tent. And the Bible says of the ten, and took an hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples. Dito, so the ganyan si, ano, si Cesar, himbing na himbing yung tulog niya. She took that nail and put it in his temples. And the Bible says, and fastened it unto the ground. She hammered that, you know, that nail so hard, na yung, yung the nail pierced through from one side to the other side and fastened it to the ground for he was fast asleep and weary. Ganyan ang nangyayari kapag kayo ay panatulog. So he died. See? So when the soldiers of uh, the Israelites came, Jael said, are you looking for somebody? Come inside. And Jael became popular. Why? Because she helped because of Israel. And Rahab could have done the same thing. But instead of turning over the, the, the spies, she received them and she hid them. Again, as I have said, that was very risky in her part. What she did was an evidence that she was truly a believer. You know what? True faith cannot be hidden. Kung ikaw ay talagang mananampalataya ng ating Panginoon, hindi mo maitatago yan. Kung ang mga tao sa palibot mo ay hindi nila alam na ikaw ay mananampalataya ng ating Panginoon, you better ask yourself the question, are you truly a believer of Jesus Christ? Because it will manifest. It was a courageous faith and this is the kind of faith that we need in missions. You know, I salute our missionaries. They have the courage to leave their comfort zone. They have the courage to go to, to places that they have never been before. They have the courage to go and meet people that they have never met before. 
and they have the courage to go and face obstacles that they have never faced before. Ganyan yung ating mga missionaries. Some of them are being attacked physically. Some of them are being robbed. Some of them are being beaten. And yet, they have courageous faith like Rehab. The mission work requires courageous faith. It takes courage to witness. Alam nyo, minsan na i-intimidate tayo sa iba. Witnessing is very intimidating. You have a friend, but somehow you are very intimidated. You cannot share the word of God. Folks, you need to have the courage of God. Witnessing requires courage. Giving requires courage. You know, it's very hard to give our finances because we look at the future. If I give this, what will happen to my needs? Well, the Lord can take care of you. It takes courage to go as well. It takes courage to leave your comfort zone and obey the Lord. So, Rahab's faith was a courageous faith. And secondly, we see that Rahab's faith was a confident faith. It was a confident faith. Makikita natin dito yung kanyang trust. How she trusted God. How she depended upon God. Listen to what I will say. I think it's in your notes also. But faith is not merely a steering of the emotions that gives us a false sense of confidence that God will do what we feel He will do. You know, this is exactly what's happening in other churches. You know, through music, through the preaching, they steer the emotion. And they give you a false sense that God will do what they feel God will do. That's not faith. True faith involves the whole personality. Yung totoong pananampalatay, it affects your entire personality. True faith involves the whole personality. The mind is instructed. The emotion is steered. The will is affected. It acts. Why? Because the, the will is affected. You know the Bible says we are created in the image of God. Amen. God is a person. And when the Bible says we are created in the image of God, that means we are, I am a person, you are a person. And a person is somebody who possesses intellect and emotion and will. True saving faith will affect your entire personality. Look at Rahab. And how did her faith affect her mind? She knew. Sabia, for we knew, for I know. And then it also affected her emotions. She feared. And it also affected her will. She, she, she did something. She obeyed. Rahab believed in a personal God. Look at verse 11. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, for the Lord your God. And if you go back to verse 8, makikita mo, I know that the Lord, she believes in a personal God. Amen? Amen. Do you believe in a personal God? Amen. You know, God is a person. Not only that she believed in a personal God, she believed in a powerful God. Why? Because she said in verse 11, He is the God in heaven above and in earth beneath. That is the God of Rahab. Yung Diyos na kanyang sinasampalatayanan is the God of heaven, in the God of all the earth. She knew that there is no stopping to what Israel is going to do. Kasi sabi niya, whom you utterly destroyed. Now she wanted assurance from the spies that when the city was taken, they would save her family. What did Rahab do? Anong ginawa ni Rahab? Tignan niyo. Alam niyo na, the city of Jericho will be destroyed. It was a fortified city. The whole world yung ano eh. One wall. Talagang napakakapal ng kanilang mga walls. Doon nga nakatira yung mga tao. Dalawa yan. May, fifth, ma, may, may wall dito, may wall dito, may inner wall yan. Alam niya naman walang kakayanan yung mga Israelites. They don't have weapons. But because of her faith in the power of God, she knew that Jericho will be destroyed. And you know what she did? She pleaded for them. She pleaded for others. 
she pleaded for others. She asked the spies, sabi niya, when you come and when the city is, uh, of the city of Jericho is destroyed, she, she is saying, please say, verse 13, that you will say, I lie my father and my mother and my brother and my sister and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. You see her pleading for them? And not only that she pleaded for them, she pleaded to them. Because after the spies went, what did Rahab do? Rahab went to her dad, her mom, her brothers, her sisters, her relatives, her friends, and that was not easy. You know why? Because Rahab was a harlot. She was a prostitute. How would you feel if one day somebody comes to you and, uh, for example, this is my cousin. She knew I am a prostitute and then goes to him and said, you need to come to me to my house. And, she, and he says, why? Because the city is going to be destroyed. Who will destroy the city? The Israelites. She was a prostitute. And now after speaking to his cousin, she goes to her Lola. <laughs> she should. Okay. And to her Lola. Okay. And she speaks to her Susu and uh, Guka and says, I need you to come to my house. Why? Because the city of going, the city of Jericho is going to be destroyed. Then what? But only my place will be saved. The city of Jericho is very big, and you are telling us that the only safe place is your place? Who are you? It was very difficult on, on Rahab's part. But after pleading to the spies for them, she went out and pleaded to them. It's like praying for people who are saved and going out and so winning and asking people to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. In chapter 6, we come to chapter 6, in verse number 22 and 23, the spies were sent, look at that, but Joshua, but Joshua had said to the two men that had spied out the country, go into the Hartland's house and bring out hands the woman, and all that she had, as she swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren, plural, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the cup of Israel. The, Can the city of Canaan, the city of Jericho was destroyed. Only one part of the building was intact. And so many people was inside the house of Rahab. Why? Because of the way that she pleaded for those people and for the way that she pleaded to them. You know what? Concern for the lost is demonstrated both in words and works. If I will ask you today uh, to say Amen, don't, don't, don't answer me, but if I will ask you who cares for the lost, you would certainly say Amen. But you know what? True concern. No. Confident faith. Confident faith is what we see here. Yung kanyang, yung kanyang faith dun sa kanyang, sa kanyang Panginoon. And she believed in a personal God. She knew what God did. She knew what God can. And she knew what God will do. Alam niya ang gagawin ng Panginoon. She believed and had confidence in an awesome God. You know what? When we apply this to ourselves, we are like Rahab. We are sinners saved by the grace of God. We know we are saved now. We have no fear of going to hell. Why? Because the Bible says if you receive Jesus, you will be saved. And we have made that decision already. And we know that there is going to be a judgment day. The soul, the sinner, it shall what? Die. People who will reject Christ will one day be thrown into the lake of fire. We know that. We know that. And we also know one place where they can be saved. And that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. See? We know where they will be saved. See? 
So we see this in Rahab. Her confidence, she had, she not only had the courageous faith, but the confident faith. She believed in the power of God. She believed in the power of God. Do you believe in the power of God? Amen. Do you believe that our God, the God that we serve, the God of Israel is the God of heaven and the God of earth? Amen. Do you believe that God can use you? Amen. Do you believe that God can provide for you so that you can give the missions? We are, we are serving no some God. The third thing that we see in Rahab, not only that she had courageous faith, she had confident faith, she had concerned faith. She had concerned faith. She was fully aware of Jericho's destruction and she was concerned about her relatives and friends. As I have said, she pleaded for them. And then she pleaded to them. That's how we demonstrate our, our concern for others. It is demonstrated by our works, not just by our words. It is demonstrated by our labor, not just with our lips. Hindi lang sa bibig. Mabuti yung sinasabi natin, kinakanda natin, a soul winner for Jesus. I love to tell the story. It's good to sing those songs. Because when you sing that song, I love to tell the story. You know, a soul winner for Jesus. A passion for songs. Those are good songs to sing. But you know what? Those concerns are simply coming from our lips. But when we go out, take somebody with us, open the word of God, show them how they can be saved. That, my friend, is showing the love of God or demonstrating our concern through our labors. You know, if you only know the men and women in our church who has the passion to serve God, one guy who is here right now, you don't know him. But he said, the Lord did something in his heart while he is here at BBC. He said, Pastor, my job is it's important, but it's not the most important thing to me. No. He said, the Lord has done something in his heart. Whoever he meets, he tells them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether he be a Nepali or uh, he, just, you know, he just tells people. He started several Bible studies in the industrial area. And uh, in the, I know him. And he has that passion right now. I can see his concern, not just with his lips, but with his words. And we should continue to do so. It's an important thing. How we care. Everybody cares. Everyone here has, you know, we are concerned. But some, our concern is our finances, our concern is our problems. Our concern, our concern is our worries and that's all. But God is looking for men and women here today. I'm not saying don't be concerned about your family, your finances, your, your health. I'm not saying that at all. But our main concern should be the souls of men. The souls of men. Because someday, we will die. Our concerns really don't matter. What's important is the souls of people. It was a courageous faith. It was a confident faith. She believed in God. She depended on God. She trusted in God. She knew nothing was impossible with God. And now we see her concerned faith. She cared about other people. And the final one, Rahab's faith, was a compliant faith. It was a compliant faith. It was an obedient faith. I want you to look at verse number 15. The Bible says here in verse number 15, Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the, the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountains, lest the pursuers meet you. And hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward ye may go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind, look at this, thou shalt bind this line 
O scarlet red in the window, which thou hast let us down by. Maglalagay ka ng tali. Scarlet ang color. Yung parang mapula-pula na kulay. Ilalagay mo sa iyong bintana kung saan kami ay bumaba. And then what did, you, what did they say? And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the streets, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be within the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any man be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thy oath which thou was made to swear. What do we see here? No, but it's not mga spies. Ang bilin nila was this. Aalis kami, gagawin namin yung sinabi mo. But please, maglagay ka ng tali sa bintang kung saan kami bumaba. Pula. The color is very significant. Why? Because it pictures the blood of Jesus Christ. It's just like the blood in the doorpost in Egypt. You remember? During, before they came out of Egypt, they were commanded to kill an animal and put the blood in the doorpost and the death angel would pass that line and compare the good on the doorpost, the death angel would pass. Nobody would die in that family. And that's where we got the song, When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. That's what the song was taken from. That's why it was very significant. That was our assignment to tie that uh, scarlet rope and not only that, but to bring her father and her mother and brethren and all her father's household home unto her. Now, in verse number 18, look at this. Look at verse number 18. Yun yung sinabi niya na yung assignment niya. Rahab did what was required. Ginawa ni Rahab yung kanyang assignment. Tignan sa verse 21. And she said, according to thy words, so be it. And she sent them away and departed. Look, last part of verse 21. And she bound the scarlet red line in the window. She complied. She was obedient. That's why I said her faith was a compliant faith. She was obedient. And we read later in uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse number 23, that so many of her relatives were saved because she was obedient. And not only that she did what was required, we also find that Rahab was rewarded. She was rewarded. By the way, your salvation is not your reward. Because salvation is a gift. <laughs> when you obey, you do not get saved because you obey. Amen? Amen? You get saved because you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. But when you comply, when you obey, others get saved. Amen. Your salvation is not your reward. But the salvation of others to be your reward. Amen. They get saved because of your obedience. They get saved because of your efforts. God used you. Amen. And so you look at those people and you can see them, ah, the Lord saved that person because I obeyed the Lord. See, so many people were saved that day because she was obedient. We see a powerful lesson on the importance of obedience. It resulted in the salvation of others. As we obey our master and the mandate that he gave us, March 16, 15, many are spared. Many are saved from going to hell. Are you compliant? Are you obedient to the Great Commission? Rahab's faith was a courageous faith. It was a confident faith, it was a concerned faith, it was a compliant faith. And you know what? The Lord has given us the opportunity to be involved in world missions. I arrived in Qatar January 25, 2011. 
my first service with DDC was January 28, 2011. That will be have the same kind of thing. Are you growing this way? If not, maybe you need to come to the Lord today and say, Lord, give me this courage. And give me this, this courageous faith. I'm always intimidated to win souls. I, I fret. I am intimidated to give. I, I, I am easily intimidated. Lord, give me this courage. Lord, please increase my faith. Give me the confident faith to trust in you, to believe in you. Lord, give me the consent faith. Lord, help me to care for others. Jude verse 22, the Bible says, and of some having compassion, making a difference. You will make a great difference in the lives of others if only we have that concern. And Lord, give me an obedient heart, an obedient spirit. May those be our prayer for this year. Lord, we thank you for the message you gave us today. Lord, I did my best. You gave me this message. Lord, I thank you. Now you have given it to your church. I pray, Father, that BBC will be a church that will possess the faith that I have there. A sinner that experiences the grace of God, the graciousness of God. And we have experienced the graciousness of God as well. Lord, I pray that you will grant us this kind of faith. Grant us this kind of faith. If there is anyone here who is not saved today, Lord, I pray that you will help them to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and as their Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I will not have you raise your hand for now. I'll just give you a simple instruction in just a little while. I will ask you to stand. And I'll ask my son to play the piano softly. When you hear the piano starts playing, I would ask for you to give your seats. You come to the front. Be honest to the Lord today. What kind of faith do you have? You know that faith is one of the most important things in the Christian life. The Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, Rahab did not have a very good reputation, but she had one thing that really impressed the Lord, and that was her faith. Some of us, we are the, the, we are the contrary. We are the opposite. We are very dignified. You know, we have a good reputation among others. But the thing is, we do not have the thing that pleases the Lord in that respect. You come today and ask God. Faith comes. You need to ask for it. The disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. If you want to have this kind of faith, you can have it. What you need to do is ask God. The piano will start playing now. Maybe it's better if you just remain seated for now. For a change. If God spoke to your heart, would you come around? Would you come around? Would you respond to the message of God? Who will be the first? God bless you. God bless you. Just excuse yourself and then come. Just come. Let me ask some of you, when was the last time you came forward? You hear the word of God Friday after Friday from after Friday? When was the last time you came and responded to God's invitation? Would you come today? Matagal ka na rin inaantay ng Panginoon na lumapit sa kanya. Kapag ikaw ginakausap naman ng Panginoon, huwag naman natin patigasin yung ating mga puso. That's our soft heart. Hindi naman yung katabi mong ina kinakausap ng Panginoon, ikaw. Anyone else? Can we honestly say, ah, uh, my faith is courageous enough. I don't need to, to increase my faith because I'm at the point where I am. I consider myself courageous in my faith. I can see myself as somebody who is, who is confident in my faith. I believe in God. My faith doesn't waver. Hindi na nangihina ang aking pananampalatay. I'm also concerned for others. 
I have this concern already. I am very, very concerned about that. So I, I don't need uh, to increase uh, my faith in that area. Or I am compliant, I am obedient. I think I am obedient to the Lord. Can you say those words? If not, my friend, you still have time. You come. That's why we have church. We have church so that we can hear the word of God. And when God speaks, we respond. Anyone else? It's not a long preaching. It's not a long preaching. The Lord says to you today, if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Huwag natin patigasin ang ating mga puso. Kapag pinatigas mo ang puso mo, hindi ka nag respond sa Panginoon. Alam mo nung sabi ng Panginoon, my spirit shall not always strive with men. No wonder some of you, you don't feel the message of God anymore. Hindi ka na kinakausap ng Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't convict you anymore. Why? Because He knew you are very hard-hearted and you would never respond. But He responds to them. Love you, Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for these dying children. They are here. You know the desires of their heart. You are the one who spoke to them. And you see those decisions in their heart. We may not exactly pinpoint which part of the message, a word that has been said, a line, a paragraph, a verse, but you have spoken to them. And for that I thank you. Lord, I pray that you will help them with those decisions. That they will remember this day when they made a decision. Whatever decision they made. We pray and offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening so